Hey there, Kelly O'Connell, author and attorney. Hope you're well. It's starting to get to be autumn, isn't it? There's a uh, hurricane coming up through Mexico right now, so headed towards Texas and a lot of other things that are going on, uh, one of which was John Gruden just quit or was fired. And there is a huge deal going on with uh, Southwest Airlines and their virus uh, their virus protest I was contacted by a group of people today who were like who would like to have uh, information on their rights under COVID so I'll keep you posted on that uh, could be a big case but I wanted to get into a idea that I had uh, observation I wanted to see what you think of it Forced beliefs are backfiring on the left. And what I'm thinking is that there's a difference between now and, say, 20, 50 years ago. Now, say 50 years ago, 75 years ago, everybody in the United States is pretty much considered a Christian. But it was up to you to decide whether you were a believer or not. Uh, You could be Jewish. You could be, uh, you know, Scientology. Uh, You could uh, be an atheist, um, but it wasn't up to anybody to tell you what you had to believe. Now, run the clock forward 75 years. We're now in 2020, 2021, about to get into 2022. And the fact is that religion has been put to the side to some extent. We're not the Christian country that we used to be. The surprising number of people, a growing body, I think it's at least 25 or 30 percent of people say that they don't have any beliefs, they don't have a religion. And I think it used to be 80 or 90 percent of Americans considered themselves to be Christian. So there's been a sea change there. And now people on the left, people who are humanists, people who are socialists, Marxist, communists, whatever you want to call them, liberals, progressives, lefties, are increasingly getting into what people think personally, and if they can make a, a, a law against what you believe, then they will do so if it doesn't agree with them, but they will at least try to use the information that you have there. Their, um, forte is to get people fired, to get them in trouble, to get them to lose their job and their future jobs if they're in the entertainment industry. Um, You're not allowed to think outside of the group. And they've kind of sexed it up. They've had all, for example, all these late night hosts who one after the other attacks Trump and acts like they're, they're getting up and reading the temperature. They're just, you know, they're representing um science and yet an, a very large number of the things that were used to put down Trump have now been exposed as being not just wrong but meant most of them to be made up and the left people by like Colbert and uh, I don't think Jimmy Fallon is, is much but uh, Jimmy Kimmel is is in on it and uh it's kind of sickening but it's just an example of all of the power that it, that the left uses to get people to break down but if you remember that it's only 10 percent of the population that's far left it will give you a sense of the possibility that we can win this war so I'd say secular neo-Puritanism is running amok, breeding virulent rebellion. And this is my thoughts, and you can tell me what you believe. But when somebody comes up and tells you not what to do, you let's say you go to a, uh, a place, and there's certain rules in the place. If you want to come in here, you have to do this, and you can't do that. You can't really have a beef with that. The person owns it, or a business owns it, and they can set down their own rules. But for people to tell you that you have to, for instance, in your private thoughts, support trans and the 40 different types of of gender and uh, gay marriage 
And think of all the hot button topics. You have to support feminism. Uh, you have to support woke. You have to assume that white people are racist. You have to say that anything that is a protest is okay, unless it's the Republicans or whoever it was that uh, went into the Capitol on January the 6th. You have to assume all of these people are right or wrong. The people who, who would be conservative, who would tend to follow the Bible, or the surprising number of people who are conservative who are not religious, but see the common sense in supporting marriage or in wanting there to be a, a, a smaller social network um, who, are, who are interested in less vaccines and, and private choice in your vaccines because it's about your body, your health. Just, you know, like women said with their abortions, their babies, it's no difference whether you're going to wear a mask. And all the other crazy things that are going on, if you apply your personal beliefs to these things, and if it gets out that you're a conservative or you're not a liberal, then you could have some real problems. Now, I did talk radio for six years, and whatever attempts that I had made in the past to try to fit in, it didn't really work anymore. Everybody knows where I come from, but, you know, people don't really bring it up. But think about this. Everybody has a right to tell you in the society that you shouldn't murder, you shouldn't steal, right? I mean, that's not just common sense. It's it's how you make it as a society. So there's nothing wrong. There, there's, there's no tyranny to say it's against the law to murder or to rape or to uh, let, let your neighbor's car on fire or to... Uh, do a thousand other things. Go beat beat your dog in a in a public place, um, or your kid, or um, sell secrets to the Russians. All of that. Um, those are just obvious crimes, and there there's laws against them, so that they're punished, and so people who might think about doing those things will realize that there is a punishment for that. But for somebody to tell you what you should believe in private um, that's totally different and, and you know what's and, and that's what's happening here but something is is else is happening you've got the law say I'll use California for an example the law is now supporting theft you can't stop someone from stealing a thousand dollars or less of goods from a store in California. And we've all seen these videos where people come into these stores just blatant blatantly coming in and grabbing stuff and leaving and the and the security guards don't do anything, the employees don't do anything, but if they did, that thief would have a right to sue or attack back. And it's it is putting out a very strange and and evil sense at this time because you have leaders like the guy that Newsom that just just survived his his um, you know recall attempt and and peop- and he's acting like he just won the lotto for a billion dollars. If you try to codify people's personal morality, not the law, not their actions, but think about the difference here. And I know you know the difference, but we don't talk about it. We react to it and we say it, what they're doing is crazy with all this woke stuff. But we've gotten rid of sticks and stones can break your bones, but words will never hurt me. That's the, that's the separation here. It's the things that are evil that have always been designated as being evil that are um, that a society has to have laws against but when people whether they claim to be well meaning or not we know that they're not because they're just trying to control us come into your life and say you can't believe A through Z and if we catch you doing anything like emailing making a comment uh, admitting that you don't believe in in wokeism and leftism, we will do what we can to destroy you. So you see this guy um, who was part of the 
the coup against Trump just got his his um, retirement reinstated. Yeah, I can't remember his name, but you know who he was. He was the one person who was punished. So the people that did all the evil things against Trump, the FBI, all these people, they're not being punished. And because they're not being punished, then that just breeds more and more of this type of behavior. It's not about Trump in the least. So anybody who wants to tell you what you can or can't believe personally, that's satanic and it's got to be shattered. It's got to be resisted. So it's a mafia that tells you what you can or can't say. It's a mafia-esque idea that says... Um, they can use any evidence, no matter how flimsy, no matter how old, to get you fired, to get you banned. But that's what they do, and we've all seen it. Now, most Americans hate wokeness, so what can we do? When will it stop? Well, it's abnormal. Most normal people want to follow the criminal laws, unless they get very agitated or unless they've decided to enter into a life of crim criminality. But yet they want to, and we all want to choose our own private beliefs. That's one of the pleasures of being alive. So a person who comes up to you and says, you have to support whatever it is. Let's just say boys racing girls, boys dressed as girls racing girls, or wrestling girls, or playing basketball against, or whatever they want to do anybody who criticizes that is 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 a bad person and needs to be silenced so that's what's going on here you can no longer use your common sense now remember how was america how was america as we know it started and when we heard about christopher columbus which i should probably do a show on he's kind of an interesting person but the first group of people went to Jamestown, and they were coming here for gold. And when they went to Jamestown, it was a mistake because they built their settlement in an estuary or in a in a next to an inlet from the ocean where the tide came in and out. And what happened is they throw the threw their refuse into the water, and then it would it would go out, but then it would wash back in. So all of their affluent, their waste, would be, get washed into them and there were a lot of diseases there were a lot of insects and so they were battling this stuff all the time and they died they were replaced they just never thrived but up in Plymouth you had these ships that came in and they were loaded with essentially think of it this way half of them were Puritans who wanted to start a new place where they could have religious freedom and the other half were just people who were sold berths or seats on these boats who wanted to start over in a new land. So from the very beginning, you had a plural society that had to be able to deal with non-believers. And there was a black man, and he was not a slave. So the country didn't start with slavery. But they were in Plymouth, and they tried to do communal farming. It didn't work out. They established a certain level of you know, free market or whatever you want to call it in those primitive days. But people kept what they grew and they thrived. Of course, they got help from the Indians. We know the story from Thanksgiving. But those people um, with Winthrop writing this, this document that became kind of a foundation for our Constitution saying that they wanted to build a society that was a light on a hill that shone the light of Christ, the, the light of the gospel. But they wanted it to be fair and they wanted there to be liberty. That The reason people came to this, this, this continent was liberty. They didn't want the government to tell them how to, to worship. And the, and the battle back in England and, and in Europe was that the established church was going to tell the Puritans that they couldn't worship how they wanted. So they left the church behind and they came here and they were mostly um, congregationalists, a church that is not as prominent as, you, as it used to be, but they were the first church to establish 
local leadership in the new world and so or or in in Europe and then it was transferred over here now people that try to force you to agree with them on on their personal beliefs that that's a tyrant or a fascist and so now the Atlantic magazine calls the left the new Puritans while the art of manliness website describes the rise of secular religion and the new Puritanism. So we're now looking at a humanistic Ten Commands. Liberals now have their own universally true beliefs, just the same as the Puritans. I mean, if you want to say that the Puritans, who were extremely um, well-educated people and on the cutting edge, and um, for instance, the Royal Society, the first scientific society, that was based on Bacon's new organum. Uh, they were, most of the scientists in there were Puritans, or they were strongly religious people. And so they were into science, they were into literature. Um, Robinson Crusoe, Daniel Defoe, the writer of that, what came out of a Puritan background, and he's considered one of the most brilliant writers. And you know, so I mean, it, Puritanism was had very high standards, but but it was not perfect. And some people complained that they were over the top in their beliefs and wanting other people to to honor them. And whether that's true or not, it is true now. And so what's happening is you can't have freedom of speech now. Why can't you? You might make somebody feel bad. Well, I got to ask you this: What in the hell difference does it make if if you if you make somebody feel bad? Why is that? Why is that wrong? That's that's them reacting. Why, how how did and how did it become that it was black or gender or it is trans? It is these things that um, are are by definition kind of controversial. Why are they the most important thing? in history right now it's a question I've never heard answered now when you're trying to force people to agree with you it's gonna backfire right what if you were around a friend and the friend demanded that you agree with everything that he believed in even though you had different ideas how long would you spend around him well you probably would avoid him or her well, the, the human nature that desire the affinity for free choice and, and not being manipulated into our choices is called reactance. That's when folks resist domination by others of their private thoughts and beliefs. And I've got a little quote here from a website for you. Broadly, reactance refers to the idea that people become upset when their freedom is threatened or eliminated so much so that they attempt to reassert their lost freedom. The theory is relevant to the idea that humans are motivated to possess and preserve as many options and choices as possible. When people's options are restricted, they experience aversive emotional consequences. Reactance is very similar to a layperson's idea of reverse psychology. Humans will tend to do the opposite of what they are told to do. Being ordered to do something by an external person or source implies that someone is trying to reduce one, one's freedom. Reactance also refers to the idea that people will want something more if they are told they cannot have it. As a result, humans may act in a manner that will oppose a resistance presented to their freedom. And another thing that is not mentioned here but is obvious is a person who comes up and tells you what you have to believe is asserting an authority. Now, Joe Biden might have the authority to make many decisions for the government, but to what extent does he or Nancy Pelosi or um, many of these other far left personalities, what right do they have to tell you what to believe? And what right do they have to tell you <clears throat> that you can't be opposed to something like socialism or, or, or a thing like free love or too much welfare or, or just go on and on. You're, you're a human being. You're put on this earth for a purpose where you might believe that you were evolved here. But 
Either way, we, we believe that individuals have a right to make up their own mind. And if you didn't have that, we'd be robots. And if you think about the dangers of making society follow one idea, what about when Facebook and Google would not allow any statements to be made about the idea that the Wuhan lab, the Wuhan lab created COVID, which almost certainly it, it did now. We know that it did, but that was not allowed to be talked about. So we lost a year, year and a half of investigation time. So... <sighs> But the main thing is these people, none of them are fighting for your, your self-interest. They're not fighting for the Constitution. Nancy Pelosi getting up saying that we have to increase the debt because the Constitution says it's important to honor your debts. And she's just a silly old leftist, an old socialist who is, is, who's trying to create a socialist America before she dies. And she's shrill. She is self-righteous. She's, um, you know, her and her husband got hundreds of millions of dollars, from what I understand, by insider tra- trading in, in uh, the area in California where they live, Silicon Valley. They were given information time and again on when to buy stocks that were going to leap. And so she and her husband made money off of other stockholders in those companies, and it's theft. And it's also illegal. And it's certainly wrong for a person in public office to do these things. But all of these politicians think they're fighting for a new world. They're fighting for socialism. And they have every right to lie, cheat, and steal against capitalists. Because they're not really capitalists. (laughs) So, Liberty USA. America is about liberty. So when people come along... We have no authority in our private lives and try to dictate to us what we should believe. Demanding we accept their ideas, Americans typically get angry. But if the left really believed that they were correct, then why don't they spend time, instead of talking down to us, instead of fighting against us, and try to, instead of trying to use the law to stop us, why don't they use their logic, their superior logic that they've used to figure out what the truth is? And if they're so much smarter than us, why don't they take the time to talk to us and show us facts and persuade us so that we can all believe the same thing, but they don't do that. And the reason they can't is if you haven't noticed, a lot of these people on the left don't seem very bright and they can't win a debate, especially when they're led by ruined crime family boss. King Joe Biden and they have no confidence, intelligence or art to win any debates when you have that kind of leadership. They misuse the law to force us to have to bend the knee to their belief system, which is robbing America of all of its beauty and its innocence and its productivity. Well, we once fought a war over liberty. Let's pray Democrats are not so stupid as to start another war over our sacred right to choose our own beliefs, destiny, religion, and God. All right, so that's what we're talking about here. And trying to find you a little bit of weird news. Um, So the... The... uh, a couple of stories here for you. One of which is that giant rats the size of cats are invading British homes. And this is September 27th, 2021. Enormous brave rats are invading British homes through t- the toilet. An expert claims Andrew Delbridge, who runs Ace Pest Control, says rodents the size of cats are on the loose in Norwich. They're bigger and braver than before the lockdown and um, one couple that he was working with were run out of their own home by an infestation another client found a giant rat swimming in her toilet bowl which is now starting to happen all the time she was using the bathroom she heard the noise and looked down and it was in the toilet bowl and it was gigantic and so the rats are a lot braver because humans haven't been around to fight pardon me 
so they're saying don't feed your pets outdoors. And uh, people who have seen rats outside shouldn't feed wildlife at the same time. The rats will uh, get in to eat that food and they will get bigger. And uh, rats are now up 50% from before the COVID. And one rat was measured, was killed and measured and was found to be 21 inches from nose to tail. And that was in Bournemouth could be the biggest rat they've ever caught all right your last uh weird news story hitler's sex life included s m and incest a new documentary claims and this is new york post and may 3rd 2021 and so hitler had a complicated kinky sex life filled with voyeurism sadomasochism porn addiction and even incest and um this goes against the um, idea that he publicly shunned sex, but he even played with urine. And uh, according to Hitler's Sex Life, it, which aired on Sky History, and so he supposedly had a relationship with his niece, Geli Robel, 17 at the time, and began living with Hitler along with her mother. He became obsessed with the teen, 19 years his junior. And so they were together for six years uh, romantically. And um, German defector Otto Strasser claimed Hitler liked the extremely disgusting sex acts. And uh, Robel was forced to take parts in these um, games. And then she was found dead at 23 in Hitler's Munich apartment. And... Um, so anyway, she was involved in scatological play. And so a lot of these files were destroyed before the end of the war. And um, so he, anyway, I don't want to bore you with this if, if you don't find it interesting. But I thought it was kind of strange. But nothing that Hitler did would be that um, surprising. Um, and, and so anyway, hope you have a good night and thanks for tuning in. I will catch up with you on the flip side, uh, tomorrow or sometime soon with another podcast, Kelly O'Connell, po uh, the uh, knockout radio. And if you could subscribe and give me a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. Have a great day. Ciao.